rig there, bro. Did you give me your ID? Come on, dude. Come on, bro. What are we doing, dude? We're about to get on Delta. Not gonna tell you what class. <laughs> Made it safe and sound to North Carolina, and our boy Arnie's picking us up. We'll see it on the camera now. So Chucky doesn't know that his truck is on the front cover of CK Magazine. So the guy, Chris Baker, who owns CK Magazine, he's coming to this meeting, and he's going to show it to him. Look, Yates, if I'm right, they build engines for, for NASCAR. One of their representatives are coming, and then another Chevrolet representative is coming because they've started to hear what we're doing. And then there's a guy. It's from... funny how people figure out what's going on, oh, huh? Man. So, and, and Jimmy's also a big help. But anyway, it's all kind of tricks tomorrow. We go over tons and tons cool. of stuff. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're so glad to come visit. And... Yeah, and like I told Arnie, you know, my truck, I was never able to build a truck with an unlimited budget and do with no rules. Everything we've ever raced, you had rules, you had a budget, you had this and that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the guys in my shop, NASCAR wrote the rule book over half of these guys, you know. So, I said, look, anything we can come up with, let's do it. So we did. So my truck's way overkill, it's faster than I can drive, it's faster than any professional driver can drive it. So, the spec truck he's wanting to build, I know what's superior. I can detune it and put it in a spec truck class, and that truck's gonna be by far superior. It ain't gonna break, because we already tested this shit. You know, it ain't like going to some catalog and looking, well, this might work, this might work. This, you know, we know it's gonna work. You know, so the competition really is not gonna be competition because, you know, they're showing up going, man, I hope my shit don't break. We're, like, we're showing up, we know it don't break. We're trying to fine tune and get that thousandth of a second every corner. You know, we don't have to worry about what's going to break and what's not going to break. And then the engine guy, man, I let, he come by the shop today. The the, uh, the Yates? No, he's coming tomorrow. Morland? The, the guy from uh, Pace Performance. Okay. The 525 is a great engine. Okay. But he's going to tell us tomorrow to tell you things. This. Yep. It's a great engine, but he's going to make it to where it's totally bulletproof. I didn't know when you crank the engine. It's 45 seconds before it has oil pressure. Yes. I learned that today. Okay. You know, so it's a lot of things that that is gonna help this motor last. Yeah, it's gonna cost a little more, but once they blueprint that engine, you got a crate engine and you got a blueprinted engine. One's gonna last a year, year and a half, one's gonna last 10 years. And if you wanna sit in the parking lot all day at the truck show and crank it and do a burnout straight out the gate, it ain't gonna matter. If you do that to a crate engine, after five or six times, you're gonna sling a rod. Uh -huh. you know, so anyway, it's a lot of things. Just it makes sense. The why it's two thousand dollars more. Or just needs to do a burnout all the way from the end line to my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, you as long that. as it does that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that that's the, we call that a whale tail. You just. <laughs> Dude, yeah, so. <laughs> the big ball swinger. He, he freaking started doing that donut and then pulls it right into his bay. Oh, so, it down. so yeah, you're, so you're, you're, I saw, I, I realized what you were going to do when you started going towards the trailers, and I'm like, that is exactly what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> and just shut it off and walk away. <laughs> you know, it, it pretty good on the last one, guys. It went pretty good. Yeah, it was good. It was like, what was that? He's already trying to detune it. He's like, yeah, it's, it's way okay, too close. This 525 motor I'm putting in my truck, I'm going to be faster with that motor than I was with a thousand horsepower motor because it's more drivable. Yeah. I mean, that it's, thing is just so oh, it's ridiculous, you know. But I, it, I raced. I was always the guy to race track that had the least amount of horsepower, and because the guys had unlimited budgets, you know, I'm sitting over here trying to get shit out of the junkyard to go race, and now I was able to build the baddest of the bad, you know. And so that's what I did. And as soon as I cranked it up and drove it, I was like, hmm, that's a bad idea. <laughs> you know, but, you know. Well, he, he brings up a good point. You may have to be the person with the least amount of horsepower. That means you got to be a better driver. Yes. That's where, that's yeah. where. So it served you down the road that you were okay. getting better at driving than those guys with more power. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And that's how we won all the races we won. You know, they, they throw the green flag, them guys are gone. 
you know, they, they might be a half a track ahead of them. On a 100 lap race, on lap 80, here I come. They done burnt the tires <laughs> off. I'm sitting back here and down doing my thing. I was more worried more about suspension and handling. You know, they going off in the corner sideways and spinning off the corners. You know, I'm worried about never slide, never slide. But 80 laps, here I come. And at the end of the race, I'm a half lap better than them, you know, because they want to turn a bunch of tires off. So I'm hiding <laughs> so that no one says anything. <laughs> I'm wearing, look, here's my mask right here. Man, listen, dude. Sean and, uh, and, and Swanky just got off the plane. We met up with Jimmy, and uh, this is the local, it's like a little small dive place that no one knows about, and Jimmy loves it here. So uh, we're gonna come here and eat. Sean's in the bathroom doing I don't know what, and, uh, and uh, we're gonna eat, man, so I gotta go. The Minx, the Minx Club Breeders Club sign in here I've been trying to buy. And I think me and you with our money we can probably buy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all feel it? Hey man, it's good. I'm very good. I gave the big dog his first umbrella for the drizzle my shizzle. Cut that off. So then you got a video of the guard though. He's like, I'll tie your ass up. I'll find you. <laughs> What's your last name, Edward? class is actually the guy that doesn't want to go to spec class yet and we'll come back to that outlaw class is a guy who says i want a thousand horsepower my name's chuck i'm uh just a home builder of uh of, of trucks that now people think are pretty cool john provost from california and we build cars and trucks jimmy bullard and me and arnie kind of this stuff kind of fell in our lap it started out as a poacher and coach shootout now it's turned into a driver series we're just day by day in it. <laughs> but we are gonna be the, the spec series, we're gonna be the chassis manufacturer for now. You know, uh, hopefully other people come in, but uh, we're helping develop the spec chassis the class and using our friends from NASCAR to help us develop this thing. So whatever we produce, we want it to be a superior product. Uh, engineer kind of do everything here at MRC, anything that Jimmy needs or figuring problems out, helping the guys fabricate. Uh, I'm Chris Baker. I met Arnie at <clears throat> my event, the C-10 Nationals in Texas. And uh, since then, I started uh, CK Truck Magazine. Don Blackshear uh, from Pace Performance. I'm the director of Circle Track Engine Development there. Uh, we are a GM Performance Warehouse, and we basically have a department that focuses on circle track racing engines. Morning, guys. I'm David Lewis from Arbor Gates Racing Engines. Um, we run the spec engine program for NASCAR, which is uh, not a sealed engine. It's a cost containment engine for the younger kids that are coming up through the program. And like Don said, we work very closely together on a lot of different programs. And um, I met Jimmy about a week ago when he called me up looking for some parts and kind of filled me in on what was going on. And, I thought that was a pretty cool deal. We want to try to get like, the whole thing of the series and the trucks being built is take the guessing game out of it. Like you said, motor's already been proven. We're gonna, I, I love the tattletail. I love that tattletail box. Let us know if someone's tampered with it or not. And, um, and. The part with the box is, is if, um, if somebody does tamper with it on the ignition box and they go out, they think they've got in the program and done something to it. They go out on the racetrack, the motor will only turn 4,000 RPM. It locks there the motor go. down. So there's, there's a lift there's, 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 Great. You're <laughs> quiet over there. Yeah, you're telling all my secrets here. Yeah, our Knoxville package, you know, racers, they're the most creative people in the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in right. all aspects, even from guys that race little four cylinders, they yes, all are thinking outside the box. There was a trap in the box to where if it got plugged in to any computer other than mine, yeah. it went to a default okay. and in turn, it wouldn't rent, <laughs> you know? And it was so easy. And, and once they caught the first guy, he goes out and the, his head hits the dashboard and quartered away down the straightaway. It's like, why is it on the rev limiter? We didn't change the rev limiter. Right. Well, guess what? 
you had somebody smarter than you that laid the program out in the first place. So awesome. uh, there's, but, and the other thing is that I didn't really get into on the spec engines. We have a QR coded secondary ceiling program that we put on all of them that basically you can tech the entire engine with your smartphone. Okay. So, and what it does, you'll scan it. It'll go to our database. You enter in the engine build number that's stamped on the right front of the intake. It'll bring up all the specs on the engine along with photo documentation of all the cable seals on that engine when it left the shop. Nice. So you can tell if anyone's tried to tamper with anything. This is, this is an idea of what the truck will look like. This guy done like this. That's a rendering. That's, that's Pedro. That's Pedro's truck. The only thing is, is I, I know he's got the different yeah, front end. I know, we'll, we'll change the front end. Uh, yeah. Make him a little lighter and look a little better, but... Um, we're waiting on the, the cab to be mounted on the frame rails to really get an idea of how the cage is going to end up and where we can mount these rear suspension points. But um, this is a model of what's in Jimmy's truck. The test part. We just wanted to make chips today, just so I come up with a quick design cool. this morning. Cool. So it's going to have, do you face, are you facing first? Sure. Facing All right. So face we're, first. we're facing a perimeter, pocket, drill, step, and chamfer all one program. Even though the, the, the stuff looks like it's straight, we're gonna make it straighter. Rule book says you're allowed 5,000. That's how that whole so, like But it's got to be 095. Right. So every time we get our tubing, she's under. Right, right. Yeah, she's under. It's 090. <laughs> we get our tubing ground to the exact tolerance to whatever the take man's going to say. Yeah. And most people don't do that. That's most people just do 95 wall. That's right. And that's it. That's right. And that's raw steel. But, but it might, whenever they order 095, it might come in at a, yeah. at a hundred thousand. All right. Take that plus all of the tubing. How much weight is that? 80 pounds. There we go. Just in wall thickness. So we're at a we're at a secret meeting at uh, Jimmy's shop, and uh, there's a, there's a there's a lot of titans of industry inside this room right now. And one of the things that we're doing is we're replacing a motor. We're putting the CT525 in here. Yes. But why did we do that? Did, what did we do at VIR? We we blew the we <laughs> blew the 434,000 horsepower engine. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't the engine's fault, we found out. It was an oil system. It was the long straightaway coming by the flag stand. So it's the three quarter mile straightaway. Okay, what, what kind of RPM do you think you were running when you're doing that, that uh, straightaway? I was literally running, you know, we run 160 mile an hour, but I was half throttle. <laughs> I was, I didn't have the balls to go. So I was probably turning 6,500, 7,000. Right, right. But the long straightaway and that pump continuously in the motor, not letting off the gas, wouldn't let the pump. Yeah. Re rebuild. So the cool thing what we're doing here today is uh, we, we had purchased a CT525. We're putting it in. Everyone's doing the hustle, uh, but we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's and guys are just finished putting fuel in it. We're pressurizing the tank, the water system, the checking oil level. I'm going to crank it up today and everything goes good. We have a kind of like a shop tour. Um, the guys from Yates, uh, it's Robert. It's Robert Yates. It's, it's Robert Yates Performance, Yates which is the Chevrolet spec engine for NASCAR. Yeah. Yates builds the the K and N, Arca, and the uh, Wheeling modified series engine, and it's actually an LS engine. It's an LS engine, and then Yates Performance builds. Right. But we also got uh, Don here from Chevrolet, and Chevrolet and Yates work together, and they're giving us a package. We well, are gonna have a time of your life, you know, racing at different road courses. Uh, we made sure that the that the rules kind of coincide with the with the autocross, which is a shootout. But um, but man, we're we're excited. We're excited for you and the customer. Uh, we're gonna produce these trucks, and uh, and that's it. So let's crank this one up and right. and play with it. See y'all later. All right, ignition's on. Find the hole. Find the hole.